Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. What is your pleasure this time? How about a little murder with mystic overtones? Not to mention a most unusual motive. Why do men kill? In the ordinary way, for money, for power, for women. And then we have those who kill for revenge. Or out of jealousy. Or because they are consumed with hatred. Or driven insane by emotion. Moving along, we even have those idealistic spirits who will kill you for your own good. Because you are too obstinate to accept their religion or their way of life, which they insist is better than yours. With all of these, we are more or less familiar. But did you ever hear of a man who was killed because the murderer wanted his talent? You're about to. Don't kill me. I, I'm sorry, Fred. I, I really don't want to. I, I, I have money. Take my money. I don't want your money. I, I, I resign. You can have my job. You can have a great career. And I was sorry. I'll give you everything I own. It's not enough. It's not enough. But I, I'm rich. It's not enough. Well, what do you want? I want everything you are. Everything you are. <laughs> mystery drama, A Death of King, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mercedes McCambridge. His name is Frederick Sparling, and you'd never notice him in the crowd. He's not much to look at, middle-aged, stoop-shouldered, nearsighted. He spends his days in a science laboratory at one of our great state universities, teaching serious, younger versions of himself, men and women who in 20 years will become what he is now. Of the estimated 3 billion people who inhabit this planet, less than a thousand would possess even a glimmer of an understanding of what he's talking about. It's an almost metaphysical mixture of physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology. Well, that's how he spends his days, lecturing. However, he spends his nights listening to a lecture. And it's usually a variation on the same theme. Well, the suspense is over. Not that there ever was any. We knew all along Clontarf would be made head of the department. Well, Emma, after all... After all what? The second time in 12 years you've been passed over. But that's you, good old patient plodding Frederick Sparling. Nobody ever has to worry about fearful Freddy. He won't get mad. He won't quit. Go ahead. Use him. Abuse him. Now, my dear, I'm not aware that I've been used or abused. Indeed, in the department, everyone is the soul of courtesy to promote Clontar who doesn't have half your seniority. Emma, dear, seniority isn't everything. Oh, no? No, of course not. Well, then, this must be something new. I see. In the early days, you said you were passed over because you had no seniority. And now that you have more than anybody else, suddenly seniority doesn't matter. Am I... It's complicated. No, it isn't. It's very simple. You know as well as I do that to be the department head, you have to be a full professor. Oh, let's not start rubbing salt in that wound. Yes, but am I? The most to... brilliant man in the field, and you're only an associate professor. Emma, we go through this again and again, and really, you know why I'm not a full professor. Well, maybe you're satisfied being pushed around this. Sudden furious outbursts have been known to create such serious imbalance. Well, I'm right. You know I'm right. It's pure and plain and simple justice. Chemically, you risk death from oxygen deprivation. Oh, I'll die. And it's going to be the perfect crime. Because you'll kill me. But who could prove it? What's the district attorney going to say? Your Honor, he worried her to death. 
He got her so mad. There is a logical, reasonable explanation why I cannot be head of the department. Well, I don't want to hear it. I can't be head of the department unless I'm a full professor. And I won't be appointed full professor because... Well, I haven't published anything. And why not? Because... Why not? Look at the trice those other men write. Precisely. And I won't publish unless it's something meaningful. Meaningful? Why, the work you're doing... I refuse to publish, to set forth certain... Why? Why? I'll tell you why. I've been conducting experiments that I... But I would never say this except in the privacy of my own home and to my own wife. I realize how this might sound to strangers. But I am now at a point where I have gone beyond the limits of present scientific knowledge. Well, aren't you going to say anything? What do you want me to say? I, I know how that sounds. Is it... Is it I'm insane? How can any man presume to say that he knows more than... If I... it's true, why shouldn't he say it? Is it true? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm afraid it's true. You're afraid? Why are you afraid? Because no man should know what I know. But you do know it. And that's why you should publish. No. No, never. I'm afraid that if I publish what I know now, it... It could very well mean the end of the world. I don't care. What do you say? Oh, you scientists. You always talk like that. It's so ridiculous. The world goes on. Yes, but this... If this you're is... afraid you can destroy the world, don't let that stop you. What good is the world to me? Or to you, the way things are now? You're becoming the laughing stock of the college, and I'm becoming a dowdy old hag. And I'm not even 40. Oh, now, my dear. Now, my please. dear, what? You're the world's most brilliant scientist. Oh, well, I wouldn't say well, that. Well, I'd say it. You should have recognition. You should be internationally famous. Well, there are people who know about me. Well, what about I... me? I want some fun in my life. Some excitement. I want to stop squeezing dollars and hoarding pennies. I want to meet interesting and important people. I want you to start publishing. Is it possible that you don't understand? I told you, if I were to publish my findings, it could very well mean the end of the world. Who cares? As long as you get credit for it. What? What's this? Who's calling us? I mean, it isn't as if we were somebody. Now, now, Emma, we are important. Everyone thinks highly of us. Are you kidding? Well, aren't you even curious? About what? About who's at the door. Oh, oh, yes, I know who's at the door. You do? It's Alex. Alex? Alexander Thornhill. I never heard of him. He's one of my students. One of my graduate students. Brilliant fellow, but he... Uh... Yes? Well, he's having some financial difficulties, so... I I told him he could, uh... Stay here for a while. You what? Well, we do have a spare room. Well, you just tell him. He said he has no place to stay. <laughs> what am I running here? A hotel? He'll have to leave college. A brilliant mind will be lost to science. Science has so many brilliant minds now. You just tell him you made a mistake. Emma, you can't... Go ahead, make me the villain. Just tell him that your wife disapproves. But Emma, this young man must have a place. You won't tell him. All right, I'll tell him. I'm coming. You wear out the bell. Look here. I'm Mrs. Farling, and I want to tell you that it's... Good evening. I'm so happy to meet you. It's 
Oh, please. I, I thought Dr. Sparling had told me all about you, but I see now he's... He's really told me nothing. Is that Alex Thornhill, Ellen? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's Alex, Professor. <laughs> uh, Will you come in? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Emma? Mr. Alex Thornhill. Alex? My wife? How do you do? Have you, uh, had your supper? Frankly, no. Emma, we should have quite a bit of the roast left. Why don't you fix a bite for Alex while I sit in the spare room? Well, Alex, I, I thought you were bringing all of your things. I did. Everything I own in the world. In that little sack? Well, let me get your room ready, and meanwhile, you two can get acquainted. Excuse me? He, uh, he didn't ask you, did he? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, well, I, I can tell you're not overjoyed to have me stay here. Well, why do you say that? Are you sure I won't be in the way? Why, why would you be in the way? Oh, I, I had the feeling. No, actually, we have a big house here, and we should share it with, uh, well, you must be hungry. I'm I'm sorry, because I don't think you'll enjoy dinner. Oh, why not? Well, the professor has all kinds of quirky diet things. He has a peculiar nervous system. He can't have salt or spices or anything that's good. So oh. We have a pretty tasteless cuisine around here. And besides, I, uh, I'm a terrible cook. I admire women who can't cook. You do? Sure. Shows they've been putting their time to better use. <laughs> I have the feeling that I've been standing in a peat bog for the past 15 years. Oh, why did I say that? Probably because it's true. Well, of course it's true, but that's no reason to blurt it out to, to a perfect stranger. Am I really a stranger? I don't know what's the matter with me. I met you just a couple of minutes ago, and here I am just about ready to tell you the story of my life. Oh, I, I'd love to hear it. You probably know it. Dating, aging wife of an obscure professor. But... Oh, forget it. Uh, do you take coffee or tea? May I call you Emma? If you can stand it. Emma happens to be my favorite name. How could Emma be anybody's favorite name? It has such a school teacher, maiden aunt sort of ring to it. Oh, no. Emma was the name of my favorite English queen. Emma? Yes. Forget Elizabeth and Victoria. Emma was the most spectacular of them all. Oh, what a woman. Wife to two kings. Mother of two kings. Seductive, brilliant, wanton. Emma, the last great Saxon queen of England. And you remind me of Emma. Please, you speak as if she were a friend of yours. There are times when I actually feel close to her. Now, for instance, do you suppose that you could be the reincarnation of Emma? Oh, that's impossible. Why? Every one of us is the reincarnation of someone else. Well, that's ridiculous. You can't be serious. I'm always serious. Well, don't let Fred hear you talk like that. Why not? What do you think the good Professor Sparling is really talking about in his advanced seminar? Reincarnation. You can't be serious. Fred, a believer in reincarnation? Oh, he wouldn't call it that. He... Hides it behind formulae and equations, but it's just a it's form of reincarnation. Why, well, I don't believe it. And his, his purposeful reincarnation, instead of the hit and miss haphazard thing that exists in nature. And I, I could be the reincarnation of Queen Emma. Oh, yes. Huh. How would you know? Come here. No, don't. Because... Yes, because... Because he might come downstairs in a Really? Listen, I, I love my husband. Oh. And besides, I hardly even know you. You know me. You knew me. Think. Think back. No, I, 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 I don't believe a word of what you're saying. I need you, Emma. I always need you. What are you, you talking about? I whipped you last time. I didn't realize what you could do for me. You must be crazy. Are you listening to what you're saying? That was a thousand years ago. I was ignorant. I was arrogant. I wanted to own the world, but I didn't know how. Then what do you want with me? You're hardly more than a boy. I'm older than I look. 
Oh, please. And you're not as old as you look. Thank you. But I have a secret magic formula that can make you look younger, years younger. What's that? Just come here. But I... You don't have to talk. Alex. Now, look at yourself. Look in the mirror. Look at your eyes, your face. If Fred finds out, it'll kill him. I know, my darling, but it's necessary for him to die in any event. Die? Fred has to die? Why? Why does he have to die? Because we shall be compelled to kill him. We have to kill Fred? Yes, my dear. <laughs> well, I see you two are getting along famously. Well, your room is ready for you, Alex. Thank you. You know, Emma, darling, I was sure you'd approve of Alex. I was convinced you'd like him. The amenities, the niceties, the small talk that makes up so much of the ritual of our lives. I was sure you'd approve of him. I was convinced you'd like Alex. If the good professor only knew how much Emma approved of and liked Alex. You may find out when I come back shortly with Act Two. I suppose it's the story of the world. True genius is often overlooked and must labor in obscurity while sham and fraud receive the rewards of the genuine article. However, as they say, virtue is its own reward, and it's usually enough for the truly virtuous. For Professor Frederick Sparling, enough is as good as a feast. He has his work, he has his wife, he has his home, and he even has his disciple. Can the true man of learning ask for more? Feed him! Feed him! Ah, no! No! Feed him! Feed him, my lady! Pity! What has pity to do with the line of succession? Please, my lady! Please! Out! Forward! Kill him! No! No! Kill him! Uh, Emma, you. my dear, wake up. You, what? Oh, what do you want? Wake up. What, what, what do you want? What's the matter? You, you were having a nightmare. I was. Oh, oh yes, I was. Oh, it was so real. I know. You know. Until you became disturbed, it was... Oh, it must have been a splendid dream. I could hear what you were saying. What? What was I saying? You seem to be a famous namesake of yours. Emma of Normandy, who married first King Ethelred and then King Canute. Yes. Yes, that was the dream. But now, what could possibly cause you to have such a dream? Fred... How long is Alex going to stay with us? I don't know. Why? Because I don't think it's a good idea. I thought you liked Alex. I do. A young person about the house seems to make things more cheerful. A young person? It isn't as if we were ready for our social security. <laughs> we're matured, settled. Fred, how long do you want him to stay? But he practically pays his way. He makes himself useful about the house. He sticks his things. Fred, please. I would rather that he left us. Why? What objection can you make against me? Alex, I don't think coming to a place like this is such a good idea. Why not? Well, really, we shouldn't be seen together. <laughs> Who's going to see us? 
When is the last time you went out there? I don't remember. When is the last time you had any fun? I can't remember. Alex, I want to tell you something. Do you want me to leave the house? How did you know? Because you're being Emma. Queen Emma. Oh, please, Alex. Don't you see how your life runs parallel? She was also married to a Fred Swarling, except his name was Ethelred. Ethelred the Un. Oh, that's nonsense. Why? Well, how can it be anything else? His world fell apart, but not hers. She knew what to do. She prepared for the future. And so, when her husband died, providentially, they say she may have had a hand in it. Why are we talking about this? Is it painful? People don't die. Oh, now I know you're crazy. The outer shell, the hull, the heart, that wears out. But what's inside can never be destroyed. Please, please take me home. The genius of a Da Vinci, a Beethoven, the, the evil of a, of a de Medici. What happens to it? It goes on living. It finds itself another shell, another husk, another covering, another uh, temporary shelter. Well, you can't prove that. Do I have to? Doesn't it make sense? You could have been Emma. Emma of Normandy. I am not the kind of woman who leaves her husband. Even if you're unhappy? I'm more than just unhappy. I'm frustrated and I'm bitter and I... Oh, what's the difference? I made a vow. So did Emma of Normandy. If I hear one more word about Emma of Normandy, I'll walk out of this place. Oh, I'm asking you. Just look, look around you. Look at all these really attractive girls. Some of them are half my age. Look at how they're looking at you so boldly. Invitingly. Why do you want me? Oh, I know your problem. You're afraid this is just a lark for me. And when it's over, I'll walk out on you. Well, won't you? No, I couldn't. Because after Fred is gone, I'll need you more than ever. Why do you keep saying, after he's gone? Because he has to go. I demand the surrender of the castle and the abdication of the throne. Well, give him your answer. Hurl down heavy boulders. Pour boiling pitch from the battlement. Emma, be silent. I will not be silent while this bloodthirsty Viking pirate. Emma, that's what he is. That's all he is. He will not take away my kingdom. You forget. I am the king. Then act like a king. And for what am I to do? I... You! Mount your horse. Lead your troops through the gate in counterattack. Be the king. Attack. I, uh, I... Yes. What? I shall have to consult with my counselor. And meanwhile, we shall lose the kingdom. No, no. We shall consult and discuss. And hold a party. What is your answer, Saxon King? Let your sword answer him. Let your sword find his heart's blood. Emma, I must listen to my counselor. Your counselor's ignorant, half-witted, traitorous. Now, Emma, really, you have said too much. What is your answer? We shall storm the gate. We answer. Death. But, but my dear Emma, one simply does not make a sharp 180 degree turn and just change the direction of one's life. Well, one does, if one's life depends on it. Emma, my dear, I think you put some salt into the soup. Oh, Fred... We have to break out of here. This house, but this house is our home. It's our castle. Don't take castle. But we simply cannot pick up and leave. Why not? Well, for one thing, I would have to consult with some people. Consult? Why? Whose business is it but ours? And I want you to stop teaching. Stop teaching? How could I do that? It's very simple. Just resign. I'll type a letter for you. And what would I do to earn a living? You could write. About what? About the things you know. Things no one else does. Those are dangerous things. Good. And the whole world will want to read them. What I know in the hands of an unscrupulous man could... Well, 
He could own the world. How? He could simply say, Obey me, or you will cease to exist. Then why don't you say it? Because I... I can't. Why can't you? Because... Oh, I... I can't even explain it. Try. No, don't you see? A man isn't just what he knows. What he knows is a part, a dynamic part of everything that combines to make his personality. This knowledge is only a part of me. There's the rest of me. And what I am prevents me from being ruthless. Well, I can do it for you, Fred. Oh, Fred, aren't you sick of being nobody? Well, I don't feel that I'm nobody. Well, you're a character at the college. Oh, sure, there's old Fred Farland. Old? You're hardly 45. Harmless old Fred teaches our seminars way up in the clouds there. All that theoretical stuff. There's no practical application. Now, 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 Emma, you're beginning to secrete adrenaline. I know that, Fred. Too much. What do you expect? You have to secrete enough for two. Yours never flows. Your heartbeat, your pulse, your respiration. Oh, damn it, Fred. Those are the vital signs of life. Don't you ever get mad. No. Well, I see no point to anger. Well, maybe this will make you mad. Your star pupil, Alex. Ah, oh, brilliant, lad. He's more than my star pupil. He's my disciple. So much the worse. Alex, his life depends on your generosity. Without you, his education would be finished. Now, please, Emma, one doesn't flaunt charity. Without you, he wouldn't have a place to sleep. We are commanded by a higher power than ourselves to share what we have. It's our duty to share. Is it? Of course. Everything? Yes, then. We must share everything we have. Even our wives? What? What did you say? I want to know. If a man is required to share his wife. Darling, what does this have to do with Everything Alex? from the charitable goodness of your heart, you have given Alex a place to sleep. And from the moment he crossed your threshold, he has been trying to sleep with me. Now, Fred, what do you say to that? There are an infinite number of replies a man can make when his wife says what we just heard Emma say. I'll kill him. Or he could say, I'll congratulate him. He could say, well, that's gratitude. Or he could say, you must admit, my friend has excellent taste. Who knows? We all will when I return shortly with Act Three. certain primitive tribes consider women as communal property, and the greatest honor you can show a man is to accept his wife. This custom is not true of our own society, or at least uh, we don't think so. Therefore, when Emma suggested to Fred that Alex was attempting to create what the French, who always have a charming name for these things, call a menage à trois, Fred's first reaction was, Emma, my dear, I was aware of it. You were? You knew? But I'm a scientist. And what, after all, is science is observation. Observation and deduction. And you can just sit there and eat your soup. Well, why not? Delicious soup. Alex is trying to get me to... To betray you. <laughs> That's a charming old-fashioned term. Oh, I can't believe we're having this conversation. Why? Because you're incredible. Would you feel better if I commanded Alex to leave the house? Then you should do something. No. You should do something. Me? 
You should either discourage him or... Or what? Well, my dear, you need him on. That's a lie. If you want him, does it matter where you have him? Here or somewhere else? I want to do something about us. You keep telling me you can be the most powerful man in the world. Well, how can I be satisfied just to be a dowdy, do-nothing, stay-at-home drug? Emma, let me tell you that scientists labor in the darkness. Now and then, faith, providence, the higher power, gives us a sudden searing flash of insight. For a brief, awful moment, the curtain is drawn and the brilliant light of knowledge is burned into the soul. Perhaps it was a joke. A joke? A celestial joke to make that revelation to me. Perhaps it was known that I... that I wouldn't... I couldn't use it. You know what a woman needs to make her beautiful? She has to be secure in the knowledge that a man loves her. I always knew that Fred loved me. He doesn't count. I said a man. I know what you're saying. And I know what you mean. And I believe you. You sure it isn't the wine talking? It's me talking. Emma Sparling, formerly... Emma of Normandy. Ah, do you really believe you were Emma of Normandy? You were the one who convinced me of it originally. But does it matter if it's true or not? I feel like Emma of Normandy. Then you know what we have to do with Fred. Leave him. Break out of here. That's right. We can go anywhere in the world. Anywhere you say. Wonderful. Now, could I ask a question? Money. What do we do for money? Like the pirates of old, we will demand tribute. Pay or be destroyed. Now, how can that be arranged? Fred can do that for us. Fred? That's part of Fred that knows how to do it. Fred told me. I know what Fred told you. I know Fred's problem. His moral, his ethical, his personal problem. He refuses to use the knowledge that would give him one favor. I seek but I can't. How? How will you get it? Is it in a formula or something like that? Oh, no. No, it's nothing like that. It exists in his consciousness. I don't follow. It's his talent, Emma. His personality. I mean to take those from him. I'm not hearing you right. Why? We can transplant a heart from one body to another. A kidney. Other organs. Why not? A talent transplant. A talent is... Is what? It's a quality. People have it. It exists. It can be removed. How do you know? Fred told me. Fred showed me. He showed you? Yes, in the lab. On animals. Oh, I don't believe it. Listen. We have made vicious dogs out of calm dogs, smart dogs out of stupid dogs, and the other way around. But that's unbelievable. The mentality, the personality, he knows how to isolate those forces and transplant them. How? How? By surgery? How could you ever perform an operation? It's psychic surgery. I don't believe it. What will happen to Fred after you... He'll be dead. But that's murder. That's freedom. Freedom for you and me. He's a fool. He has unbelievable powers. This psychic surgery is the least of them. He could rule the world. He has scruples. I have no scruples. Now, what do you say? I... I say... When... More coffee, darling. Oh, yes, yes, I think so. I, uh, I don't understand why I should feel so drowsy. I, maybe, maybe it'll wake me up. Here you are, Fred. I have some papers I really should go over this evening. Uh, Alex, 
Yes, Professor? Uh, we really should check the results of those experiments. I... If you're feeling up to it. Oh, yes. I'll be perfectly all right as soon as I finish this coffee and, uh... He's uh, out. Yes, but a bit too deeply. You put too much of that on... What should we do? It's all right. He'll come around. We only need him to be semi-conscious. How, how are you going to... Hand me those needles. Uh, no, 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 no. One at a time. Mm. All right. Now, cut away his sleeve. Yeah. yeah. All right, careful, careful. Good, good. Now, swab his arm with the alcohol. And let me just plunge home the... There. Alex, I'm frightened. Oh, please, it's too late now. Hand me the needle on the other end of that wire. Is it, uh... Is it like a, a, a blood transfusion? No, no, no. How can it be a blood transfusion? It's not a tube, it's a wire. Here, swab my arm with alcohol. Yes. And hand me the needle. Be careful. I know how to do this. And you told me that Fred will be dead afterwards. Won't the police... Don't worry, the doctor will see only natural causes. Heart failure, shock, no way to prove murder. Now, get that little box that I hid on the shelf. Quickly. Emma. Oh. Emma. I'm coming to Don't worry about uh, it. When this is over, I'll be unconscious. Do you remember what you have to do? Emma. Uh, he's waking up. No, no, no. He's just coming around to where I want him. What do you have to do afterward? I have to remove the needles and take the box. Everything we used and hide them. And we got it. Yes. And then I call the doctor because... Uh, both of you will be unconscious. You will tell the doctor that we collapsed. Yes, that's right. And that's all you'll do until I become conscious again. Yes. Now, how long will that take? Ah, uh, a day, two days. Uh, uh, Alex. Oh. Alex. What, what are you doing? I think you know, Fred. No. No, don't. No, Alex. Turn up the volume, Emma. What? The middle knob on the box. The middle knob. That one. Yes. Turn it up. Emma. Don't turn it. It, it, it won't do you any good, Alex. Don't kill me. I am a... Alex, maybe... It's too late. Too late. You, you have done it for nothing. For nothing. Higher, Emma. Higher. Alex, I'm frightened. Oh, for nothing. You're killing me for nothing. It's working. Already uh, I feel something. I see something. Uh, I know something. Oh, good Lord. What I see. What I know. Nothing. It's for nothing. You knew this. And you didn't use it. I'll rule the world. No. No. Alex. You see this. Emma. We own the world. I can make matter disintegrate before your eyes. I can make it happen just by thinking. No one can stop me. We will rule, Emma, the way we once did. But this time, forever! Alex. Alex, darling. Uh, what? What? Uh, You're coming out of it. Oh, Alex, Alex, speak to me. Oh, Emma. <laughs> Emma. <laughs> Your voice. It's so different. It's so familiar. Well, is, uh, is everything uh, all right? Oh, yes, darling, yes. The doctor came after, after you fell unconscious. Yes? Yes, and I did everything you told me. I hid the apparatus. And I said that you two had just collapsed at the table. And the doctor and the police had a fine time with all that. Uh, Emma. But it's over now. And no one suspects. We did it, my darling. We did it. And now, let's live. Uh, Emma. Here, I brought you a cup of coffee. Oh. Come on, drink it. You'll feel better. And then I'll prepare you some dinner. Thank you, dear. Thank you. I... Oh. What is it? Oh, sugar. You you put sugar in this. <laughs> you know I can't tolerate sugar. Alex. I mean, how many years have you cooked for me, dear? No sugar, no spices. I, I have a very delicate metabolism. 
Alex, what are you saying? Oh, I, I must get up. I must uh, get to the laboratory. No. No, we're leaving. We're going to be rich. <laughs> what are you saying, my dear? Whatever gave you such... You... You're not Alex. Well, of course I'm Alex. But you're talking like Fred. Well, I, I must talk like Fred and then think like Fred and act like Fred. What you said, if you transplanted his talent... Well, yes, yes, I have his talent, but I also have his personality. You see, I am Fred. Oh, no, no. Well, we'll be happy here, and we're very happy with our work, our home. What more could we ask, Emma? Call yourself a king. A king. What are you saying? You are a fool. And a coward, Emma. I never want to see you again. I'm going to him. Let go of me. No, Emma, no. I must take you to a doctor. I want the pirate. The Viking pirate. We could rule the world. Yes, dear, I understand. Now, I'll take you to the doctor and you'll feel better. Help me find my Viking pirate. Yes, yeah. yeah. Of course I'll help you. <laughs> She started out a thousand years ago as Emma of Normandy. That was the first time she married Ethelred the Unready and left him for the Viking Canute. And she's been leaving him ever since. But this time, for the first time, she has both of them in the same body. Where can she go from here? We'll have to wait a couple of hundred years to find out. You only have to wait a few moments, however, for me to return with more. A poet says, Inside us all faintly echo the softest notes of a forgotten melody. Where did we once hear it? And when did we sing it? Sometimes in the absolute loneliness of the darkest night, there is a whisper. Is it a vagrant breeze or someone calling out, reaching out from the bottomless well of the past and saying, Remember me? Once I was you. But perhaps things are best left the way they are. Perhaps there are things best not remembered. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, William Redfield, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I'm sorry, son, I didn't understand. Those were the six words. Sorry for what? For remembering me. I wouldn't expect you to forget immediately, of course. That would be unreasonable. But as soon as possible, put me out of her mind. My life on earth was over. I'm sure she meant well, your mother. After you're here a while, you...